Hello friends and welcome to another video, we'll be playing 10 minute games here explaining our moves on chess.com So let's open with uh, Central Pawn, King's Pawn, this is the French Defense Advanced Variation, that's what we're playing He's gonna play C5 I think That's usually what they do, okay, so he's playing differently, so am I We're just changing the order I think E6, okay, let's keep developing That's interesting. He wants to exchange the, the, the light square bishop. That's what uh, is a problematic piece on the on the on the French. Okay, so let's do something like this. I'm giving up a pawn here. I'm giving up a pawn. So I can accelerate my development. So if he pushes b5, then b3, and I play with a pawn being a pawn down. But now that you played it, queen a4, and I can immediately get back the pawn, because b5, I take the pawn. All right. So now my pawn is uh, uh, sufficiently protected. If knight f5, what? Oh, come on, the game is over. Why did he blunder this? There's no point in playing this. Oh, okay, let's go for the next one. I, I, oh, he still wants to play. I, I don't. I don't like such a games. I don't like to win this way. But okay, let's keep going. If he wants to play, let's keep going. Let's try it. So at least let's try to show how to convert. How to convert those kind of games. So first we are a lot of protecting our central pawn, and then we are fighting for the column. And all we want to do is exchange all pieces. And go for a winning endgame. So that's that's interesting to show you guys how to convert um, a, a game with a lot of advantage. So he definitely, he clearly wants to attack there. So basically what I'm going to do is I can go back to the bishop to c1 because my knight is protecting there. Yeah, that's it. So let's go. We want to exchange every single piece. So now we are already threatening that. And if he knight comes, I'm ready to play bishop c1. My knight is guarding the e5 pawn, so I should be completely fine here. Now I'm protecting a3 pawn as well, so I can push b3 whenever I want, unless he plays like this. Which should be a good move. Okay, but now that he allowed me to kick him, let's kick him back. And uh, there is a nice square here for our knight. But before that, I'm going to play bishop e3 and... Possibly, this is good move. The point is that this knight is not gonna be there for like forever. So, but this is a good move, definitely. Okay, how do I want to go on to continue here? Maybe putting the knight here. Well, he can never put the knight here. I think I can bring the king already a little bit. Just improve the position of the king a little bit. Don't need to do anything radical at this point. Um. Well, I want a knight here now. It should be great to have a knight there. Just Let's just make sure we are not doing any. Because this blocks the bishop a little bit, but the knight going there, I don't think it's a problem. So yeah, so yeah, we are now able to play this after king e2. Yeah, king e2, knight e3, and we exchange all the pieces. That's what we want to do. Oh, so you don't ha you don't uh, allow me to do that? You don't you don't give me time for it. So now I'm putting pressure here, c6. So he has to defend, and he's going to defend, and then play bishop b6. This this is what he's going to do. But now his rook becomes very passive, which is interesting. Which is something we want to do. Okay, but if he wants to play like this, now this knight is less protected than it was. And what I can do is keep bringing the pieces. So if I bring the king here, I just need to be careful with this square. But my knight cannot be kicked out from here, so I'm taking the risks. I'm taking the risks now. All right, so he's giving up a pawn. I don't know why. Okay, he's trying to open up lines for his pieces, I think. So I could go knight c6 here or just take the pawn. Knight c6, if bishop b6, I think is the only move. If he doesn't, if he does want to keep the pieces. 
So bishop b6. Yeah, I think I'll go like this. I'm not taking the pawn. I'm not giving him so much activity. And I can play, I can keep you with uh, bishop d2 now. I do think it's interesting. I do have, a, I'm, I'm ready with a lot of material. So I don't have to do like that. And now this move is fine. So if he attacks me, I can go back there. No, I, I, I yeah, I, at this point I can move the knight. At this point I can move the knight because my bishop is, but I think it's better to exchange here. Okay. And now I can play this, attacking the pawn and the knight. And it should be super good. Because this knight is always like giving support for this pawn and trying to do some, some, some double attacks. So I want to get rid of this knight. Yeah, I definitely want to. So now I'm attacking the pawn. I think the best for him is try to connect those pawns up. Okay, he's trying something else. Okay, so after rook a8, bishop b4. Oh, he's playing like this. Okay. Oh, he wants to put a knight on d3. It's not possible. Sorry, it's not possible. He's fighting, as you can see, he's fighting a lot. So he's still believing that it's possible to play this game. And Well, if I make a, a primitive mistake, then he's correct. So let's just... Uh, I could play bishop c3 here as well, but I'm going to play just simple chess here. The point is he's going to attack this pawn. So maybe I should play bishop c3, so I could play bishop d2 if needed. Yes, I think it makes sense. So if he wants to put pressure here, I just push the pawn. But I'm attacking there now, f6. My immediate threat is to capture here, but not, not here and then here because here is falling apart. So, so here first. And if he comes to knight here on e3, then my rook goes up. And then it starts to get problematic for him. You know, after knight here, I can, I can go here simply as well, because we do exchange a lot of pieces. But I think this combination of the bishop and the, and the rook here and the knight, so we are already starting a checkmate uh, sequence. Okay, he defended very well. Now my bishop is attacked. But it is also protected. So I will add pressure on his knight. I will add pressure on his knight. So he doesn't have time to play f5 and my bishop would be hanging. So now his knight is attacked. And we keep trying to exchange all the pieces. He's surviving very well, he's fighting well. It's a very instructive game because he's already on move 36. And that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to play with honor and, uh, and fight until the end. So that's, that's pretty nice on him. Pretty nice on him. But okay, now the game is over. Oh, no, that's nice. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. Yes, he's a very good fighter. Let's take with the uh, with the bishop, because there was a ch I was I was gonna be pinned after that, so very nicely done. But okay, now we take with the bishop and not with the knight, and uh, we are good. Okay, I can simply take. So now his position is collapsing. Is rook g7 better somehow? In any way? No, I think that's what he wants. He wants to create complications. Let's play simple chess here, very, very basic chess. I can also take the knight here, but uh, I'll be pinned, but uh, I can take here. But then, you know, why to allow that? Let's just take it. 
All right. But now we can simply take and take. And uh, it's too much material now. We do have a knight and three pawns up. Because, yeah, the, this really position is really collapsing and, and he should resign now, I think. No, he can still, he can still, he can still try. He can still, he could still, he could still uh, get closer to my, to my uh, rook. But okay, I take here and I take there. Then it's pointless, keep playing. I think we do, we do have a very good accuracy here in this game. Yeah, 88.7 eight, eight, eight is pretty, pretty much good. This is pretty good, but he played very good. He played very well, and his only point is that uh, let's see his only mistake here in the game, which was, yeah, he he co he got completely confused. So at this point, let's see the evaluation. It's equal, which is good for black, and uh, but then he he got confused. Uh, this wasn't move ten, but it's nice seeing that he played ahead and and he kept playing. So as he he he's, he was trying for his chance. So if I do. A, uh, primitive mistake, he can be back, but we did play uh, very well him here and gave him no chance. But he resigned on only on move 41 for a blunder he made on move 10. So he's a really good fighter, so very nice. Let's do play some one more here. We do have time to play one more game, one more 10 minute game. So we reached 20 hundred on 10 minute, which is nice. So this guy is streaming, let's go for him. Maybe he's stronger than he is. Maybe this is a speedrun account. So he's streaming. Uh, let's watch his stream while he plays. Is he gonna play? Let's watch his stream. So what what happened? He's saying something. He didn't want to play against a stream. Partita anulata. That's very weird. And then he started another game against someone. Okay. I don't know what happened. Maybe he saw I had a streamer account and, and he got uh, shy. I don't know. Let's go for the next one. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened, so let's go for the next one. The, the, the fact that is that he was there and he deliberately chose to abort, which is against the chess.com rules, but... Well, he, 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 I, I don't know his reasons. So let's... Okay, let's go for the next one. Maybe he saw I'm a national master because he can click my and, and see that I'm a national master and maybe he didn't want to play a national master. I don't know why, because it would be interesting for him and for his audience. All right, so this is the King's Indian, King's Gambit, and uh, this is the Falk Beer Counter Gambit, which, which has this very fancy name. Now his bishop is under attack. Oh, he went for the exchanges. Well, I do want to attack this pawn. So now I'm protecting my pawn. Why is he doing that? Did he blunder already in the opening? Because I'm castling now, but he's gonna play c4, right? Yeah, nice, that's interesting. All right, he's getting, he's getting his pawn back. That's a completely fine opening. Yeah, I can, I can still create him problems, but I don't know if it's worth doing it. Because he's going to end up capturing with the, the rook and I'll be attacked many times. So I think the best for me is just uh, keep putting pressure here. So how do I do that? Simply by moving the knight, I think. Oh, he does have some interesting stuff going on in the future. So only now I castle. He cannot play knight g5 now and his queen is not attacking there. So, okay, he's attacking my knight. At the same point, it's very dangerous for him. So I'm gonna play pretty aggressive now. Pretty aggressive. Um, he's not threatening anything. Yes, I'm risking it all. I'm playing super aggressively now. And I'm threatening this. Okay, not a huge threat anymore. Not a huge threat anymore, but you know, this is pretty uncomfortable for him. This is pretty uncomfortable. 
this position. So now I'm attacking the queen. Now I'm attacking the pawn and f2. That's the idea here. Um, actually, I don't have. Oh, he went for this. I, I, I was gonna say I don't have anything. I didn't have any, any, any threat there. <laughs> that is odd. Okay, he's definitely trying to to come with those pawns. I'll try to stop them. I'll try to stop them a little bit. Knight e4, very strong. But it can still escape with the bishop. I still have some escaping routes. Yeah, he wants to, to, to trap my bishop. This is pretty clear and wise. Very wise. And now I go here. Just uh, saving my bishop. <laughs> All right. So he's getting a good um, expansion here. I'm trying to stop d6. He's definitely trying to do it. So I think now I should stop it. Yeah, I'm attacking this pawn. Yeah, this is my top priority now. This pawn majority four against three is my only concern on this game at this point. And uh, his knights are so um, far away that they cannot help. So now we do have a target. And it's not easy for him to defend both pawns. I think at this this point he just don't have enough compensation. But of course he can try this because then there is this double attack which would be annoying. So uh, that's what he wants to do. This is clever. So I'm taking this pawn. This is clever. So basically what I have to do here is this square is already controlled, so I need to double it. Yeah, I need to get away with this rook. And then try to force the exchange. Then I should have a winning endgame. So this move is nice. This move is nice. Now his knight is attacked. And I could capture the knight, but I don't I don't have to do it because being only one pawn up in this end game, I don't have to sack it right now. I can do it maybe later. So let's try to yeah, he's he's still able to escape here. But now what is he gonna do after this? Well I can I can let let's let's switch the approach. Let's switch the approach. I'm going to try to, to have a passed pawn here. Yeah, I'm switching the approach. I could play king g7 and his knight would be trapped. But, you know, he can always try to escape. All right, so basically we're going to exchange if he wants. So another pawn is down. He doesn't want to exchange for sure. And um, you know what to do. Take the other pawn as well. Well, why not? Why not? Oh, oh! I fell for that. Okay, now I can still win this, but uh, it was yeah. It's what it was. It, that's why you, you should play and not resign easily. That's why you should play and not resign easily. But okay, let's let's try to put some some fight here. And uh, I can still try to win, but most probably it's a draw. Most probably. Oh, what? Why didn't you? You should have captured. Now I think you will have problems. I think. I think. I think. If I can exchange the pawns, then I'm really super safe. That I'm not gonna lose. You know. If I can exchange here and exchange the other one, I'm super safe that I will not lose. But if I want to win, let's bring the king. Now, even if I sack my bishop on the pawn, I'm not losing because two knights cannot 
King and two knights cannot checkmate my king, so I'm super safe here. I'm probably not losing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I lost a full rook. But I was still trying to win. I lost a full rook. Okay, so uh, if I attack this knight now, where does he go? Well, I think you're starting to get in trouble. Now I do have this threat. You're starting to get in trouble a little bit. Also C5 here is pretty strong. So that's why he blocked it. Okay. So I'm actually threatening to capture because it would... Wow, those knights are so dangerous. Every time he does like a check here, he got so scared. I got so scared, dude. Now he can double check me there as well. So should I go here? And we do exchange and then it's pretty much a draw. But yeah, I'm not going to risk too much because those knight jumps are so scary. They are just so scary. Well, this move, because I got two pawns attacked, so I'm pushing this one? No, I cannot do it, because this knight takes it. And if I push c5, the knight takes here. Hmm. So I'm simply capturing now. Yeah, I can, I can never lose this unless I really want to. Unless I really want to lose, but I think he cannot capture because of the fork. Because there's no, that, yeah, I think that's it. He couldn't capture because of the fork, I think. So now how about this? I keep protecting my pawn there, but the other one goes away. And then I start pushing both pawns. I'll try to do this. I'll try to do this. So your knight is attacked now. And we start marching with those pawns. See what's gonna happen. I also have a pawn here to march with. It's gonna be interesting here. Three pawns for a knight. I can never lose this. I can never lose this game, but I can try to win. So here's the safest. As I move forward, I lose the bishop, yeah. So now, how can we continue? He wants to give me checks and bring in his pieces. So I am playing this, I think. I think it's good. I think it's good. Not easy to make progress here. What does he want to do? There is no double check. Let's keep pushing pawns. If he brings the king, then I start pushing the other pawn. Yeah, let's attract his king. Let's attract his king. Yeah, awesome. So now he's attacking my bishop, and now I give support for the other pawn as well. This is pretty interesting. Can both knights hold my pawns on, on all those wings? So I think this is the only move. So I don't get into trouble. Now his king gets closer. But now I push the other pawn. Can he stop both? I think he can. But uh, what if I do this? It's not going to work. I feel like I can win this, but I'm not sure. So if I play this. Or maybe this, which which knight I want to kick? Which knight I want to, to kick? I think this knight first. Because he goes like this and then he cannot capture the pawn anymore and I play like this. And if he goes like here, then I maybe push the pawn? No, I cannot push it yet. But it's interesting. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, let's see how it goes. Really not sure, but okay, I gotta play something. Because maybe if he takes, I push and I can still, or maybe he takes, I take and he takes. Maybe I can still win this, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's a draw. Okay, he's trying to stop my pawns now, but can he stop all of them? Because if I push here, he will have to take, it's kind of forced, and I'll push. And I'll win a knight, but my bishop cannot uh, save everything. So now I cannot attack this knight. But what if I play this, he captures and I play this. And he takes, no, it's, it's bad, it's bad. I, I still don't lose, <laughs> but I, I just give another piece. I still don't lose, but all right. So yeah, I think this, he could draw the game unless, well, my king cannot ever pass this. Look at this wall. My king cannot go to the game. So yeah, I think let's go for the draw, no problem. No problem. So if he checks me with the knight, I think he go back here. He cannot check me. This is bad to check. He has to, you know, bring the king. So I push the pawn, he sacks, and, and he's pretty much happy with the draw. But he wants to win, and that's bad for him. That's really bad for him, because I can play this now. This is pretty much a draw, but maybe I can try to fool him now. Let's play this. Because he takes the pawn, I push. Yeah, this is pretty easy to draw, but I will fight a little bit. I'll play this move now. Check, no, check not working. Maybe I should bring the king. But there's a wall there. There's a wall. Yeah, there's a wall. Okay, let's go for an easy draw. I don't have time anymore to try to win this. Does he win if I get uh, if I lose on time? I don't know. I don't know. I can still lose this on time. I don't know chess.com rules, but I think I don't lose it. Only chess I would lose on chess.com I would not. Yeah, I think that's it. Chess.com I don't lose. Lee chess I would lose if I lose on time here. But I don't think I will lose on time. I think it, it will be like a draw. Forced to draw. Unless he really wants to push for a victory here, but... Chances are he's gonna lose if he tries to do that. Okay, let's play very fast. We are threatening this now. Pushing for the win. 
Your king is already tied up there. The point is, can you survive my king and bishop? I think you can. Well, I don't know if you can anymore. I mean, you could like a few moves ago. I don't know anymore. But I don't have time to, to play this accurately, so it's probably still a draw. But of course, he's concerned. How much time do we have? Okay, this is the last game in this video. Let's see how it goes. Seventeen seconds. He's gonna check me here. I know that. I can even no, I'll not do that. But he's checking me on F three. Or maybe on B three. Okay, now he's running a long time. Tough position for him. Because my position is really relaxed. I, I have the draw. I can never lose. I think not even on time on chess.com. So now it got red. He's starting to panic. He's starting to panic. Now I'm threatening the knight. He has to move the knight. And I'll play king c2. And I'll take it. And I'll push the pawn now. King here is also possible. But here is better. Push the pawn. So his knight is tied up there. We made it! Yeah, that was a good endgame and he lost because he lost on time. That's amazing. That's incredible. Like how calm it's possible because I did have seconds on the clock and uh, I blundered the rook, but I still believed on the victory and then we got it. Let's see uh, the, the report here. I think we played a very accurate endgame, but he didn't. And that's what happened. Yes, we did, uh, we did a, very, a very accurate game. As you can see, white was never winning, even though I lost the rook, but the end game was so tough for white that he ended, ended up blundering. And although he played a very accurate game as well, uh, it was not enough. It was not enough. So he played a very good opening. I don't know how come. Did they, did they say that? Because I was better in the opening and they said like, excellent opening for him and just a good one for me, <laughs> but I was better. This is computer stuff and... Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see quickly here. So uh, this is the king, uh, king's gambit, a falk beer counter gambit, and um, bishop d7. What is good here? C6, and then knight c6. Okay, let's do it next time. Let's experiment with that next time. So here we're slightly better. The computer says he played better the opening, but uh, I don't know why. This is pretty much balanced here, and knight b4 now pretty aggressive. Followed by queen f5, I'm happy to have found it, pretty aggressive. And now bishop to c5, the computer says, before knight d3. And, but I've played this, which the computer doesn't seem to look uh, to, to like. And here, <coughs> that's the point, that's what I was going to say. He can play king g1. I'm not threatening anything at all. At all. Look at that, my knight is a ghost knight attacker here. And like, he can attack this knight, but this knight is protected. So there's really no point in, in, in capturing here. Really no point. I'm, I'm not getting anything out of from this position. So uh, this is a mistake from him because he was like, he was scared and there for no reason. And here, this is completely winning. We played a very good endgame, but then I blundered the rook, the full rook here. Let's see that. 
So those knights are really dangerous. Yeah, wow, he was just waiting for that. And then look at that, from a completely winning position to a very challenging one. The good news is that, uh, as like I felt, I could never lose this position, uh, even though he's a piece up, but I got too many pawns, and it's if I can exchange those pawns, then I never lose again, because I can even sacrifice the bishop and king, and two knights against king can never checkmate, unless, unless I allow it. Okay, so it's possible to checkmate king and two knights against king if you allow it. If you like deliberate put your king in the corner, then you get mated. But you, you would need to agree with getting mated. You need to really want to get mated. Otherwise, you don't, you, you're not. Uh, but here he took so many risks. Like he's just exchanging and, 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 and go for a safe draw. But he, he played for a win here clearly. And uh, wow, those, those. Uh, knight checks are so dangerous, but how come he lost this? Let's see a little bit more. It, he was playing with fire here. He was playing. He he just should have captured everything and and made an easy draw. But he's playing with fire now, and uh, here again he just take those two pawns, sacrifice one knight. And it's an easy draw. But I started being long on time, and he was still believing that he could win this. And this is still... <laughs> well, this is dangerous now. This is truly dangerous for, for white. Because let's see if he takes the pawn here. H3 and he can still draw, but it's not easy at all. Knight d6, king d8, knight b7. That's the only way to draw. And then if king c8, knight d6. And then if king b8, he's got this knight f5 move. And then I got bishop e5, not allowing knight to g3. And then he's got some mating ideas or perpetual checks, right? Let's see how it goes. Knight 7. And then he allows me to queen. Yeah, this is insane. This is insane. Like, this is a chess study. And then it comes with a check and it's a draw with queen d king d6. Like, this is insane study. And the table base says it's a draw. So uh, this is an insane study. I, I don't think it would happen here. And, and of course, none of us were seeing this at this point. Only thing I saw is that it's going to be pretty challenging for, for white to, to stop this pawn. So he, 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 was, um, he played well to bring his pieces. And again, this is pretty much... Oh, he did have this. He would end up drawing this easily. And, uh, but he didn't see it. So his fate was to lose because he got every chance to draw, every chance. He just takes the pawn now and it's still a draw. But he was wanting to win. I don't know what's going on. He, oh, now black is winning and now black is winning. That is a shame. And this is the only move that loses. This is the only move that loses. I don't think, the, not even king f4 should, would lose. Yeah, this would lose as well. So this is not the only move that loses, but uh, king f2 doesn't lose, but king f4 and king f3 does, and of course maybe king h4 loses as well, yeah, so not the only move, but uh, no, wow, that's, that's really a problem for him, and now king c2, and now king takes b1 for sure, and now h2, that's what I played, but uh, I think king a2 also wins, yes, it also wins. So the, the game is it, uh, it's over at this point. So uh, that's interesting to see that uh, even against the 20, 100 plus players, in, they can go wrong and, and you should, you should you know, keep in putting pressure, putting pressure in low on time, but you do have hope and he can make a mistake and then suddenly things got pretty bad for him and we got this win. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.